Dear Dhamma friends, we have come to a question and answer session of this Kalal Goda English Medium Retreat. So it seems we have some written questions. We will begin with the written questions. Uh, we have six written questions today, Bhante, today. Yeah. Uh, Venerable Swami Vahansa, I have just started meditating and never as a habit. I have such a difficult time focusing on my breathing as I feel like my brain is divided into parts and one part is focusing on the breathing while other different areas focus on other things. I'm trying to improve. Hopefully making meditation a habit will help but only advice to make it easier will be much appreciated. Yeah, actually this is where we all begin. So <laughs> it is not something to discourage because uh, none of our brains are ready to meditate unless we are a bodhisattva or someone <laughs> so maybe uh, if you are a bodhisattva it may be quite easy but whereas the other people all have to make a struggle at the beginning so because we are our minds are quite distracted and jumping here and there so that is the nature and uh, as i said even yesterday i mean when compared to the old days present day we are extremely distracted so it is quite difficult to concentrate our minds or to make it one focused so it may take some time and again the most important tool is the patience <laughs> so there is no any any shortcut but I can give you some uh, hints to uh, certain techniques which you can utilize one technique is the counting technique say suppose you are doing anapanasati and uh, say when you are experiencing in breath and the first in breath and first out breath you can make it as one and one second in breath and second out breath two two third in breath and third out breath three three so likewise you can go up to ten and if you successful then again come back to one Suppose uh, at the end at the end of fifth count, suppose your mind distracted, then you can come back again to one, one. That means in breath one, out breath one, in breath two, out breath two. Likewise, you are counting. So this little helps because you have some work to do and you are counting uh, breaths. And again, uh, it's very much like confirming that now we are observing the first in breath and out breath. Okay, the second in breath and out breath, the third in breath and out breath, all each pair you are numbering. So this is one technique that you can use. On the other hand, you can simply use the knotting, say in breath, out breath, in breath, out breath. Likewise, you can mentally verbalize it. Say whenever you are feeling in breath at the most prominent place, you can mentally note it as in breath. Similarly, when you are feeling out breath at the most prominent place or most, uh, uh, say, most felt place, you can uh, note it as out breath. So, likewise, you can keep this noting or labeling as another technique. So, this is another technique quite useful because uh, when you are mentally confirming it, verbally confirming it, not using the the, the words in the sense that you are not opening the mouth and telling it rather you are keeping the mouth closed but mentally you are confirming it mentally you are making a vitakka kind of a thought okay now it is the in breath now it is the out breath now it is the in breath now it is the out breath so likewise you can make do this change or do this employ this technique and this also quite helpful and uh, as you progress on uh, probably you can make that make this uh, label short at the beginning suppose you are calling it as in breath out breath in breath out breath say after a while suppose your breath becomes calm and uh, now somewhat uh, uh, establish mindfulness then you can shorten the term instead of in breath you can simply call it as in instead of out breath you can call it as out in out in out so likewise you are reducing the length of the term so that your mind feel less burden and ultimately you can completely let go of uh, this knotting and fully be with the breath so that is the way that is the place we need to arrive to till that you can use these various techniques 
And another thing is that before coming to Anapanasati or sitting meditation, always do a sit walking meditation. Because walking meditation helps us to establish mindfulness and it appears like li little difficult at the beginning, but once you recognize the technique, once you understand the technique, it is really playful, it is really interesting to do walking meditation than even the sitting meditation. And uh, the other technique is, say, when your left foot is touching, you are fully there, you are fully receptive there, fully acknowledging, and at that time also, if you are 100% sure, okay, this is the left, not the right, and now it is 100% on the ground, well established or well touched, contact, then you are confirming that also, using the same techniques, okay, this is the left. Similarly, when your right foot is touching, okay, this is the right, left, right, left, right. So likewise, you can mean utilize this uh, labeling or noting. So that is one of the very, I mean, very beneficial or very useful technique. And uh, that also you can discard when your mindfulness is well established. So these are the techniques, simple techniques available. So try your best. And, I mean, it is not that... Uh, you are incapable of doing it since you haven't done it so you can't do it at the moment but more and more you practice it slowly 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 your mindfulness develops and uh, if you feel that the breath breath is a little difficult you can go for rising and falling that's another technique which is little gross or more gross than the in breath and out breath where you can feel some uh, considerable change in your tummy when as you're breathing in it is coming forward rising and as you're breathing out it is going down or moving the backward or it is falling so there also you can employ this uh, labeling rising falling rising falling so each and every rising you try to be with rising and falling so these are the techniques available so i think these are i mean well proven methods it's not that uh, I am telling these things. These are well-proven methods all around the world. And uh, you can try these things. Yeah. Teruan Saranai. I would like to know whether changing position after 15 to 20 minutes amidst Anapanasati Bhavana is all right. Only if there is any pain in the legs occur with metta. Say... Say if this session you move it, moved it at uh, 15 minutes, so next session you moved it at 20 minutes. <laughs> so next session then 25 minutes. So likewise you have to increase this period, so then only your posture become somewhat seasoned, somewhat you are generating some effort, so that uh, you are building up some kind of an energy, and on the other hand your body is... Uh, sort of uh, getting some perseverance so that it, you, are, you are getting used to this posture. It is not that this is not a difficult posture but we are not used to sit like this, sit, sit cross-legged. It is something new to us but it is not a big bad, I mean it is not a big thing. As you carry on, say after a while you can even sit without changing the posture even, posture, even one hour. So right now it is it may appear like difficult, so it doesn't matter. You can change your posture after 15 minutes, but even at that time try to at least stay another one minute. So because physically also you need to get the full support which you are not getting at the beginning. And on the other hand, when you are changing the posture, try to do it very mindfully. Uh, two ways are there actually. One way is you completely, suppose you are doing Anapanasati, uh, during the change of the posture, you completely discard Anapanasati, completely establish your mindfulness on the posture and each and every little movement of your leg, say for example, you are changing the leg and you have to f fully aware about these changes, fully mindfully you do these changes, not in a hurry, but very slowly, mindfully you are doing the change. Now you feel comfortable and you can even feel that comfort and after that you come back to breathing. So this is one way of doing it. On the other hand, uh, you can s maintain your mindfulness on the breath and while maintaining that, you can do change of the posture in a, in a secondary way. So your 
main attention is on the breath in a side way in a side track you are changing the posture so changing the posture does not distract much so there's another technique that you can do so both ways are quite all right because you are continuing your mindfulness there is no big distraction happen even though the object might have changed you have continuous mindfulness yes venerable bhante when i start meditating sakman or paryanka i have many thoughts coming as advised by you i continue sakman or paryanka knowing that there are thoughts coming in and going out during sakman after some time i seem to go to a place where i am isolated and i do not have any awareness of my surrounding but i continue to walk during this time there are still thoughts coming in and going out the change from last month is that i get almost woken up to the surrounding with some push from within me again i will continue sakman and i would reach that isolated place within a minute or so during paryanka when i sit down to meditate i have many thoughts coming in and going out i see the breath too i feel my body while i stay aware of all this i reach an isolated phase nothingness sometimes there are thoughts in this place too but i do not see them clearly they are a mess of floating thoughts i do not have an awareness about my body at this point last week during the paryanka session i experienced something different while i am in this isolated place i experienced a series of vibrations that i felt from my head all the way to my toes it was not comfortable or comfortable just with vibrations once the vibrations recede i go back to that nothingness vibrations last only for a few seconds this happened many times during one session of paryanka today my experience was similar however during the paryanka sessions what i experienced was not vibrations but something like a push from within with this push i get back to the place where there are thoughts coming in and going out but within a few seconds i get back to the nothingness today in that place of nothingness there were no thoughts it was bare i experienced a backache during the first paryanka but i kept being aware of it not specifically watching and then it receded during the second paryanka During the second paryanka I experienced a leg pain which I felt strongly and had to change my position During the second session I meditated for about 1 and 1/2 hours and I could have continued for a lot longer During both sessions I was aware that my body was swaying sideways and it kept bending down none of these moments disturbed the meditation Venerable Bhante I humbly seek your guidance on how to proceed on meditation Teruan Saranai mm. May I know whose question yes yes uh, I think uh, Yeah It's okay what the how um, how long are you taking now to establish yourself in emptiness now uh, within 1 minute 2 minute yeah probably about that say are you before going to that are you going through anapanasati or so any I kind of vibration or what is the no, method i just i'm aware of all of it as breath right. i feel the body and then the thoughts are also there but even when i try to focus on anapanasati it takes longer for me to go to that nothingness Correct. but Correct. if i'm just aware then i go there faster right so while being there i mean what is the difference being there and being in the day to day life uh it's um it's like um, i'm not aware of the surrounding when i'm there right but in the day to day life uh, so it's more like i feel a, i feel silent in that place whereas mm-hmm. in the day to day life it's more loud loud yeah <laughs> <laughs> okay uh how long can you maintain this silence throughout the paryanka it will stay if i don't get that push or the vibrations right mm, no thoughts 
Today, no thoughts. For how long? For about one hour. One hour. One so, hour. are you daily practicing? Yes. Right. So then, uh, daily. Say, for example, one hour, two hour, three hour. What's uh, the time like? About an hour or one and a half to two hours. Right. In- including uh, sakmana. Yes. Right. Uh, I think then uh, doing well. So I think this 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 is quite enough. Uh, how about your daily activities? Like, I mean, is mind constantly talking or like to stay quiet or what is the kind of th- observation related to the day-to-day activities? Uh, it likes to stay quiet, but the I activi- can't stay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, still talking. <laughs> yes, like, but I try to come back to that. Like, at least in a few hours time I try to take a break and kind of go to that and then get back to my activity sort of. I try that during the day as many times as I can and then right. it's easier for me to proceed the next few hours <laughs> also. <laughs> right. Uh, so are you, I mean, are you feeling some kind of uh, change in your habits or change in your character or are you the same person as uh, two years ago? <laughs> no, so not no. the same person? <laughs> Very old now? <laughs> 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 so basically, I mean, we, I mean, we ourselves have to assess this. So that's the thing. So I am. That's why I am asking asking so many questions, because if we are if we are continuing our practice, we ourselves have to feel it really. It, the the meditation has to touch deeply ourselves. It is not the kind of a surface touching, and uh, it has to t- touch very deeply ourselves. So theref- therefore, some behavioral changes has to happen. So. Particularly the way you look at things, say how how much you are grasping, how much you are letting go, how much you like to be kind of secluded, do you like to be alone and enjoying it, not feeling lonely, but rather enjoying it and like to be alone and uh, and again uh, less stressed. You, are you feeling those things? Less mm-hmm. stress and mind, mind, mind ha- doesn't have a big joy as such, but you really like calm. to be alone. Like really to be alone. Like to be alone. <laughs> <laughs> so basically, I mean, if you feel that now, s- slowly, slowly, the stress getting less, no big tension as before, and you can handle things, but still not taking much of a, say, tension, and you are not ge- too much getting carried away by things, and uh, can maintain some kind of a equanimous mind. Um, there are few things that strike me which I find it difficult to handle but in right. general day to day normal things I can, can just, manage. Yeah. Right. So basically this is this is what we need to maintain. So as much as possible, whenever possible you try to be with that basic awareness. So this is not something artificial. So this is the n- sort of the prime nature of ourselves. So typically what happens is our mind is drifted from this home as I explained yesterday also. So this is the real home we basically have to develop. Unfortunately, we have drifted from this home and constantly attaching various things. So more and more we recognize that and more and more we let go of that and coming, returning back to this home. So we feel comfortable. We feel at ease. So there is no tension and, uh, and uh, no, no tension uh, and uh, Things are there. It does not mean actually at the beginning you might experience this state with some f- fair amount of concentration. So then you are like in a bunker where you, you are because of the concentration power you are well much protected. But now slowly, slowly what happens is you are, you are experiencing this with some shallow concentration so that this sense impingements are available. They are there but they can't penetrate inside. So you have your own kind of a protected area. So you have your own peace of mind. And uh, that area is fairly uh, fairly still and uh, fairly protected and uh, fairly comfortable. And you like to stay there. You can stay there. And you can even see things. But the content of the thought, content of the vision may not disturb you. The content of the hearing may not disturb you. So likewise, Slowly, 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 this inner peace we have to develop, we have to cultivate. So, are you experiencing what I am telling? Uh, when I see things and when I hear things, I, I sometimes get caught in it and I go with it, but then right. I am aware that it's happening and it comes back. Comes back, 
right it, it keeps coming back like mm-hmm. i see my mind doing that and it right. kind of kind of laughs inside and then comes back comes. right yeah. so that's the thing so um, because the thing is even though we recognize this place still we can't maintain it because we have so many defilements available so they still drift ourselves automatically to this distractions so that 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 is another understanding we have to und- i mean be aware because un- otherwise we don't we don't understand the real drawbacks we have still the defilements we have the all those uh, faults we have so we have to be very i mean more and more you associate this place you become just a kind of an earth worm you become no one just a just a fully aware so this is something not unique to you not unique to me this is unique uh, this is universal something so each and every one of us can come back to this home come back to this awareness so more and more we maintain it more and more we become very earth and uh, we can uh, feel different different uh, phenomena coming and going different different sensations coming and going different different moods coming and going emotions coming and going uh, sometimes we become angry sometimes we become lustful all these things are coming and going we can ma- i mean we can come back and rest but still still not 100% because still uh, say you m- sometimes you justify yourself and be angry sometimes you enjoy lust and be lustful so likewise this still we are not 100% here within us so but more and more we need to recognize the defilements so that is the most important thing so why we can't completely be at home is because of the defilements so this is where we are getting to the panya sikha the wisdom side where you understand what are the faults within myself how mind is operating how still mind is grasping what are the drawbacks okay what are my tendencies okay suppose say for example i have different different colors so i am i am picking a particular color so that is where kind of a kind of a habit available within myself say you have different different people among them so i am selectively like somebody someone i don't like another person so we have that kind of an asava some kind of a preconceived ideas as well as some uh, say conditioning conditioning within ourselves so we have to recognize all these things and allow them to decondition or uncondition so we then we become very relaxed so we are not picking things or we are not selecting things so we are, we, we are we may have preferences but as much as possible we are trying to cope up with things so yesterday samina so when i was eating i was being mindful and then i was feeling the taste and all of that but then it was something i bought off the shop and it was not very tasty so at one point i realized i was look, looking at it as it's not tasty but then again i realized even saying not tasty is another way of differentiating it yes. so once i let that go as well then it was very peaceful to <laughs> eat the rest of the rice right right so m- more and more try to keep the mind quiet so because typically we don't like to keep the mind quiet rather we like to think so as much as possible avoid too much thinking and come back to yourself so this uh, papancha you know the proliferation mental proliferation is something now we have to avoid as much as possible so because so more and more we avoid proliferation more and more the mind has peace of mind mind will return back to you mind will stay with you and uh, there is no growth other than keeping within within yourself mm-hmm. now in order to grow more and more you have to associate this place and this also not through much higher concentration so that's what i am asking i mean say how long you are practicing per day how many hours so say you are experiencing several hours the same kind of a concentration then because of the concentration power no defilements might come mm-hmm. but on the other hand suppose you are maintaining some kind of a shallow concentration but effortless so that indicates now you are your your defilement power is little less so this is how we have to balance that so we have to allow them to come allow them to appear and then only we recognize okay still i have these these uh, faults or so still i have these these uh, drawbacks so these these tendencies are still present within myself so by recognizing them we are not uh, fertilizing them we are not you are not nurturing them and we are simply letting them go simply letting them go so likewise they are slowly 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 i mean they start to fade away they are not uh, they are no more a big threat to us and this is one session actually this is this is the way we have to handle the defilements 
that the but the most difficult pa- part is that there are certain ways that we define ourselves okay i am so and so i have these skills i have that degree i have this degree i have that skill so i have this salary i have this salary i am hold in this position so likewise we have so many parameters define myself so how to give up those mm-hmm. so those are the difficult task so that we have to slowly slowly do so for that actually it is quite necessary to understand the things are nothing but cause and effect so we have to very well establish ourselves that there is no person there is no i as such but simply cause and effect is operating so therefore whenever you are experience in different different things try to see how the cause and effect relationship is involved say for example uh, say you are looking at something and you you become happy about it and see now if you apply the cause and effect relationship there say your eye eye contact has happened and accordingly some vedana the feeling has happened suppose it's a happy feeling then you like it then the tanha has happened so all that links are there say contact that pascha pacha vedana and vedana pacha tanha so all these links are there so likewise then and there you can recognize how the mind is operating how we how we sometimes carried away by all these links so more and more we understand this uh, the this uh, dependent origination origination or parisa samuppada then we understand okay this is the way it is operating there is no i as such but uh, different causes are there they are conditioning some another result to appear so more and more you recognize these things then slowly slowly the i mean the mind further become unentangled so this mind become more clear so you are improving the clarity of the mind and you are you are understanding is well established on the parisa samuppa the dependent origination then you can let go even these i claiming things say when some says you did something good and then once you are at home then thoughts may coming proving that you are someone then you can simply discard that okay i don't need that so thing have happened doesn't matter so i don't need to create a self out of that so likewise we have to disclaim all this i making and mind making so that is difficult <laughs> so for that to happen i mean you need to have a fair amount of understanding about the cause and effect relationship then you you are ready to give up you then you are ready to surrender yourself there is no person so something some cause and effect is there so then no point of holding any person as such so i am ready to give up everything so that so slowly that process happens so you continue i i think there is no place to change as such i think what is you are doing is correct doing well yeah how do you why struggle the most in that last point you said was like if i do something and if i feel that that has some negative effect on someone i keep thinking that it's karma and then it keeps bothering me like throughout the day it yes. keeps bothering me like more than the good things it's the things that i feel that i don't intentionally do it but because of my action if somebody gets a negative effect i continuously keep feeling bad about it and my conscience troubles me throughout yes, the yes. yeah typically i mean uh, if if someone asking only we have to do now <laughs> so we can we should not go to show up ourselves and rather if they are asking okay you are the only one to help me so please help me okay i sure then okay it doesn't matter it's on your own risk i am helping <laughs> so something like that so uh, no vested interest <laughs> something like that so i mean very difficult because we have to do certain things so and people may be involved and it is not that every people is uh, appreciating you and some are criticizing you and these are the these actually we have to involve in, involve in all these activities as well then only we can understand the defilements available otherwise we think that we are will attend <laughs> so it's a, it's a kind of a struggle not really a struggle but a kind of a self realization un- understanding ourselves coming back to earth and become no one and understanding each and everything how others are reacting how others are thinking about so i mean we don't need to correct the other party they may have their own way of thinking but uh, when they are commenting on us and uh, even at that time when i am creating a self out of it then i i suffer 
But suppose I am genuinely didn't do anything wrong, then can't help. Say if they are blaming or criticizing, then it may be common. Then you have to bear it. But if if there is no, if if you feel hundred percent you are correct, then nothing to worry. So world is world. You can't change it. <laughs> so you can carry on your practice and. Uh, Basically, I mean, more and more you let go, more and more you understand different, different defilements and uh, without getting caught to them, let them go, more and more you feel relaxed, more and more you feel untroubled. So the mind becomes unentangled, uh, mind is quite fairly quiet and you have the clarity of mind. So these are different, different indications telling you that uh, you are in the correct path. So your practice becomes more and more simple. So it is not that you don't need to struggle as before to see each and everything arising and passing away. So all these things are not now necessary. Rather you can maintain this peace of mind, coming back to yourself, maintaining your attention on this uh, emptiness, this clarity, this peacefulness. And while being there, allow the mind to shift as well. So don't strongly hold that place, rather allow the mind to distract. Then. Why it is distracting is due to defilements. So that is where you are recognizing the shortcomings still we have. Good, good. <laughs> okay, how to? Most venerable Bhante, after a good session of mindful walking, started watching the breath. After a few minutes, breath settled in and I was in no, tho no thought soon. During this time, I could hear the surrounding noises but was not bothered. However, after about five minutes, I felt that the mind was looking for something and it was looking for breath. Though I was looking for breath, it was not so prominent and it was just an awareness that I was breathing. Time to time, I was in no thought zone and then again checking on breath. This continued for a for about half an hour to 45 minutes. In the next sitting, same way I went into no thoughts, but I felt it was extremely boring. So after about 15 minutes, I gave up, gave up and went to do walking. Went to do walking. Your when your valuable guidance is appreciated to progress on the path. Uh, may I know whose question is this? Yours? Oh, good, good. She's always presenting her question like someone else's question. That's the beauty. <laughs> okay, that's good. So basically what we are trying to tell is uh, you, are, you can maintain that thoughtless stage. And how are you reaching that? As I sit, when I, st I just start watching the breath. Mm -hmm. And after a while, I just go into calmness and then there's nothing, there's yeah. no thoughts and in that then I start a little bit of noises around I can hear but I'm not bothered about it right. and it just goes on and one or two thoughts also come in but I'm not bothered about it, Mo basically no thoughts, Yes. only issue is like after Boring. some time, no not the first instance I knew that I was looking for something uh -huh. though I was having that uh, thing I was looking for something and then it automatically looks into the breath and I know that I am breathing but it was not prominent like the beginning so again I come back to that no thought thing right. time to time going in and out that went on then the next sitting I sat it was no thoughts but I just couldn't bear it right so <laughs> so by the way let me ask little some history th about the practice so, have you experienced the, say, have you observed thoughts or have you observed various sensations or feelings of the body or what was the way to develop uh, mindfulness? I have, uh, no, Bhante, I have not observed but <coughs> I have seen, I have observed my feelings like uh, all the vibrations and everything time, like as I started it was the breath, then breath settled in. After some time I was looking at the feelings. But I was not analyzing it as such. The feelings mm. were coming, vibrations were there, but I was just waiting. Just uh, waiting? Yeah, just waiting. Uh -huh. uh, but it was not very, you know, I should say, like, it was very calm. No painful things. It was all like very, 
So you, nice feelings. So you need painful. No, feelings? no, no. It was not. <laughs> it was not. So it was nice feelings, really. Right. So and I was happy, like I was just watching it and vibrations and all. It was not painful at all, no. Right, right. So maybe because I was sitting, I am not doing the paryanka. I am just on the chair. I meditate. Mm-hmm. Uh, so anyway, like some after some time, thoughts were coming in and in and in. I couldn't like it was just pouring down. Right. Now that it has ceased. no right. no thoughts so when when these thoughts coming coming again and again when it has happened constant that thought co- appearing that but was la- uh, last that time. was about 2 months ago 2 months ago i just couldn't sit the moment i sit the breath disappears and all but still the thoughts coming up. right now it has stopped now no thoughts no thoughts also. good okay then that's all right Mm, now i mean in order to come to this north thought area how long are you taking immediately can you be there uh, it's about after about because i do a good walking session and come and sit here right and then after about 10 minutes or so right i just go into it okay that. so then try to try to come to that while walking also can't can't you no, go there no walking i can do very mindfully i can feel the carpet and everything but uh, nothing has no vibrations nothing but i i know i'm walking and my mind doesn't go anywhere else mm-hmm. i'm just walking i know my feet are walking and so basically can't you switch to the north thought region while walking i have not tried that okay. or so i have not felt it yeah so you can try that also so now i mean basically if you are able to let go of feelings let go of various sensations and mind is not much talking and no thoughts are there and you are very much in the kind of an awareness no so this awareness you have to now facilitate you have to now familiarize so it is available everywhere now i mean we are the ones making some surface out of it or rather another layer out of it but it is always there so it is very much like a canvas say we are we can either draw something on top of it okay or else we can simply be there something like that so so typically what happens is we are we are lost in the drawing or we are lost in the artwork yeah. never established on the the canvas canvas so now canvas is there every time so while walking also you can see whether you can immediately go there okay so then the body make is maybe may simply walking but you are not much bothered about sensations and all these uh, say different different element characteristics right now rather your mind mind like to stay quiet unbothered unentangled say kind of a peace and body walking while mind still still so so try whether you can uh, get that okay so that is one area you can improve and uh, sitting also now when you are in this thoughtless region are you are you feeling kind of a deep concentration or are you can you here everything uh, and all these other distractions are available but they are not bothering you no. is it the is other it the one other distractions are available but i am not bothered about those. right okay so then fine so i mean uh, so i had very much like this the previous question actually i had to ask the same thing from you so typically in your day to day activities how how are you looking how how are you feeling now uh i feel there is an improvement because but of course i now when i get angry i know that i got angry but before that i don't know i am going to get angry but now i know like when i am getting angry okay the angry thoughts are coming so i just keep my <laughs> mouth <shut. laughs> but before it comes i don't know so but anyway i don't put words right, out right. okay so i know i'm in a, in a in a burning is still there yes yes right right, right. yes and craving okay. also i know and uh, like this is craving but uh, right so i think more and more you recognize it more and more you are letting go of that so you ha- more and more you have to let go of that otherwise there is no improvement so so it is that is the only way you have to uh, sort of uh, to to reduce the defilement so janato aham bikave passato asavanam kayam vadami so buddha says only the person who can see and who can recognize who can understand these defilements can understand these fetters influxes to him only i am telling that the uh, this eradication or the uprooting of defilements is possible so therefore knowing defilements are present is something valuable something important so it is not something bad to understand that we have defilements so buddha says in uh, in 
in uh, Sanditika Sutta, uh, I think it is in uh, Anguttara Nikaya, maybe. Uh, so there he says, when someone recognizes, no, it is in Moliya Sivaka Sutta. So here, there Buddha says, so when someone recognizes, okay, I have craving, so now craving is present. And another time, so there is no craving, so he recognized there is no craving. So Buddha says it is the Sandittika Dhamma. So it is, it is, it's a, it is a, it is a Dhamma telling you at present, mind is, what is the state of the mind? Sandittika Dhamma, Akaliko, Ehipasiko, likewise Buddha really appreciate that uh, awareness. Where you recognize what is the state of the mind. Okay, at the moment I, I have a lustful mind. Okay, at the moment I have an angry mind. I have a deluded mind. So likewise we are recognizing that. Only when you recognize, you you can do something out of it. So when you recognize, okay, you, you are not promoting it. You are not nurturing it, rather letting it to fade away. So the next time also it may appear, but not to the same strength. strength. So this is how we have to slowly, slowly, slowly things may fade away. Not immediately. Definitely not immediately. So therefore it may take time. So we have to constantly practice, constantly be aware of the mind from the very moment that you wake up until the moment you go to sleep. <laughs> so while they are looking after your niece, right? Who? Uh, the, your mom. Mother-in-law. Yeah, yeah, your mother-in-law. So it's a good time to see your mind. <laughs> okay, yeah. Okay. Yes, it's okay. You have to, uh, Can you please let us know the, dif the different de demarcation points are for Kaya Anupassana, Vedana Anupassana, Chitta Anupassana, etc. Mm. Actually, Kaya Anupassana and Vedana Anupassana are very, very close. It's quite difficult to, uh, I mean, differentiate because, you know, now say for example, whatever the experience we can define in terms of uh, five khandas. Say for example, I am now touching this. So if I consider this, uh, there is a uh, kind of uh, uh, hardness I am feeling. Now then I am referring the rupa khanda, the materiality. And again now suppose I am I, I am feeling some comfort out of touching this. Now suppose this is a little, little cold and so I am feeling some comfort then the happy feeling is there. Now I am touching the Vedana, the feeling feeling part, the Vedana Khand. And suppose now I am getting some kind of perception, perception out of it, or I am thinking, okay, this is a spectacle cover or something like that, I am getting some perception about it, so then the Sanya Khand. And again, suppose I like it, so then the Sankara Khand. So then I may have a different kind of a thought about it, then the Vijnana Khand. So all this all these five khandas are present. So, what is coming to the front is the different. So, at a given time, my, my feeling might be more stronger. I like it. Say for example, now I am drinking this tea, if it is really tasty, so this uh, maybe I, I may like it, so the sankhara khanda might come forward. So then I am in the, in the Dhamma Nupasana level. If I am looking that sankhara. On the other hand, say, uh, now if it, it is too hot, when I am trying it is burning my lip. So then I am feeling some, uh, say, painful feeling. So immediately that is at the front. So now I am in the Vedana, Ved, I mean, I am doing, if I am observing it, now I am in the Vedana Nupasana. So like, and uh, on the other hand, suppose I feel the temperature, high temperature, and not into the feeling, but understood it as element characteristic. Now in the Rupa Khandha. So likewise, all these khandas are present. So which one we select is up to us. So therefore, we all can start with the uh, Kayanupasana, where the Rupa Khanda is the prominent. And when we are shifting to Vedana Anupasana, the Vedana is the prominent, the feeling is prominent. When in the Chitta Anupasana, the, the thought, or rather the, the mind, the consciousness, Vijnana Khanda is the prominent. And in the Dhamma Anupasana, the sankhara and the perceptions are the prominent. That is more, getting to the more subtle level, 
where you analyzing you and you understand the very uh, say content of the thought what is what is the what is the tone of it say it is a lustful lustful thing or how it is arising how it is passing away uh, whether it's a karma chanda whether it's a anger or it is a mindfulness so likewise very subtle differences are able to recognize now we are in the dhamma nupassana level so this is how this is how we have to put it into in terms so i mean they are they are actually it is not that while you are doing rupakkanda while you are doing kaya anupassana that dhamma anupassana is not present it is available but at the moment our attention has not drawn to that our attention is not into the mind rather we are working with the material or we are working with the elements so similarly the vedana is present but not we are, our attention is not there so that's why i mean our attention is maybe uh, deciding which anupassana we are taking okay either it is kaya anupassana or either it is vedana anupassana chitta anupassana likewise yeah. most venerable bante very much appreciate the explanation on chitta anupassana during the sermon i feel that i have gone through kaya anupassana and vedana anupassana and now entering chitta anupassana hence we would appreciate very much if you can explain from point 11 onwards keeping in mind of a yogi who is now entering chitta anupassana in a practical way <laughs> so i can give you the recording yesterday <laughs> so you can listen to that again <laughs> uh, anyway uh, <laughs> whose question is this yes <laughs> <laughs> yeah in the front and asking the same thing again <laughs> it's it's fortunate to your husband now by the way <laughs> i forgot to tell you that yesterday that when you are telling that uh, uh, that you are less talkative now and all these things <laughs> now and more than her now her husband is benefiting from kalalgoda retreat <laughs> <laughs> Actually, it's not for only for me. Yes. A lot of my friends uh, are asking correct, the same correct. thing. Right. Uh, and uh, what? What? By the way, what is the what is the exact question you have? I uh, mean, how you are how you are practicing to practice? Can you tell us how to uh, uh, implement to our uh, day-to-day? I mean, uh, the bhavana, right? Because uh, uh, we feel like uh, we are in the uh, the. when you explain exactly we experience that right awareness right right and it's very important we know that now we come to the uh, the the emptiness we mm-hmm. feel it mm-hmm. we feel it right. i feel it right right so uh, we want to uh, we want to ex- well, i mean understand it more and more how to implement in that point yeah so basically like you expe- especially is uh, bante you said uh, uh, you have to think throughout the thought you like have to think think uh, through thought, the uh, uh, you said uh, thought through thought uh-huh. like uh, penetrate the thought or something like uh, that yeah like if uh, if you get a uh, thought you think about that Uh-huh. No, let me let me clarify then now say for example so that is why we are buddha is telling so don't go to immediately do chitta anupassana rather develop mindfulness using kaya anupassana and vedana anupassana yeah. so then you have well established mindfulness and now suppose there is a angry thought going on in the mind yeah. so now it is it is giving you some i mean your mindfulness when it is developed even though your mindfulness has developed using kaya anupassana and vedana anupassana when anger arises still now this mindfulness is capable of telling you okay yes. now anger is there yeah even though you are not yet used to look at the mind but now you feel anger yeah okay immediately so, i feel it la yes so I'm at it. that time so previously we might not look at the mind say for example we haven't yet prepare for that so rather than looking at anger say, say you can you can you can see the after effect say yeah. because of the anger okay the, you get little tensed Yeah. You you inside burning burning and all yeah. these things so, so your attention is drawn to some physical changes yes. some some sensations feelings yeah but now suppose you are directly looking at the anger you are coming forefront with it yeah 
face to face. So at that time, now you are looking at anger, and you are say anger is I'm just for the explanation, easy explanation. If I am telling, okay, anger is somewhere available in your heart. Now you are you are <coughs> keeping your mindfulness and well focused to that place, that very place, much like. Yeah. Okay. Now you are watching that anger, how it is available, and now you are not feeding it. You are not justifying yourself. I am correct. He is wrong. I am correct. She is wrong. No. So like that. You are not justifying yourself, yes. rather objectively you are looking at anger. Anger is anger. anger. Anger is just anger. And now, slowly, 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 since you are not feeding it, since you are not feeding it, it has to fade away. It has to naturally fade away because it's anger happening. anger, anger can, can't sustain itself. Yeah, it's happening. Right, mm. right. So I feel so happy, like <laughs> without taking it out, right. it's disappearing, like no suffering inside. Like, right. uh, so, and uh, when we are doing walking meditation, many to thoughts are coming, but it's just nothing now. Uh, like, uh, just I can go to an empty mind, like, right. I'm not thinking that. Right. Like, it's coming, going, I can see, right? And uh, I can maintain my walking like in a uh, proper way, not thinking, very, very happy. I really like it now, walking meditation than uh, sitting meditation. Right. I mean, sitting meditation, of course, is good. Right. But I know that I can control myself, uh, my mind, uh, when I'm, I'm walking right. more and more. Right. I can see like uh, yesterday uh, the sermon was so good. Right. I mean, uh, <laughs> you know that awareness, right. uh, you said awareness mm -hmm. is the uh, most important thing. Exactly. Uh, so that's the thing, I mean, ba basically what happens is when, when we are not recognizing that basic awareness, when you don't recognize that emptiness, so we are continuing to, uh, observe, continue to observe this rising and falling rather than appreciating that peace. So when, when you are observing rising and falling or rather rising and passing away, so at a given time, sometimes the mind can come to a cons kind of a peaceful state, letting go of all this observation, letting go of all these uh, phenomena. And now when, when such thing happen, we have to recognize that. So when it happens momentarily, we can't recognize. But when it is happening again and again, and main, I mean, it lasts for some, some longer time, say one minute, two minutes, mm -hmm. then you feel it. Then you feel that something different has happened. So far the mind was attached to, constantly attached to something. But at this particular time, okay, it is not attached to anything. So that is, that is, that is something that you need to recognize. Yeah. So that, that once you recognize that place, again and again you have to come back to that place. So you can't immediately go there. Because if you are not familiarized with it, so at the beginning we are not familiarized at all oh. about it. Okay. So that... So, in order to come to that, again and again you have to see arising and passing away. Again you see some phenomena, it is arising and passing away. So, when the enough momentum is built up, so you are coming back again to this place. Okay, one minute another, again here. Again you are, you are again lost. Again going to objects. Again some feelings or some thoughts and all these things. Again you practice this. Again you come to here. So, this is the practice. So that's why I mean, Buddha very beautifully explains this in uh, Mahasunyata Sutta and Buddha says, okay, you can use some internal phenomena to come back to this uh, emptiness. Sometimes you are successful, sometimes not successful. Same way Buddha is explaining, very practical, very practical. He is saying, okay, now a yogi is there. So he uses some internal phenomena to observation as an observation and as a result he is now plunging into this emptiness. Sometimes successful, sometimes not successful. And if it is not successful, again he is returning back to his practice. practice. Returning back to his practice and again seeing the rising and passing away. And as a result, again he is going to this emptiness. Similarly, you can look at outside or you can take an outside phenomena and the similar, similar thing, similar, similar thing, say for example. we can apply for each Everywhere, other. everywhere. Yeah. Everywhere. That's been, uh, so nice, like whole day we can be that way. Exactly. The whole day. Exactly. Till we sleep. Yes. <laughs> so, but... I, I feel it. I yeah. feel it. The actually, the thing is, uh, I mean, uh, 
there are certain times where where our mind is too involved say someone was telling okay i'm when i'm in a conversation so now even for myself say facts now now i am explaining things so when i am too much involved in this explanation and conversation i am not here <laughs> but suppose an arahant was here but not me an arahant he is there. there that's the difference that's the difference so we we still carried away by the content we we can't maintain ourselves fully with with this awareness basic awareness because we get lost with the content we get lost with the work or whatever the activity and all these things maybe the defilements now maybe i am now involved with this uh, conversation that is the content level of the activity suppose now i am explaining and the conceit arises within myself now i suppose i get carried away by the conceit now because of the defilement i am not born there so there are different different reasons now say say you are telling something which may make me angry so then because of that the angry thought the defilement i am not in the, here so likewise so there are many many different distractions many different causes why we shift from this basic awareness so these are something that we need to recognize so how 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 can we maintain this how can we uh, sort of uh, longer maintain this longer effortless this this become the nature of ourselves so this is the i mean this is how we need to practice this is how we need to continue and uh, so more and more we recognize that more and more we associate that we have to feel at home we have to feel less tensed less stressed yes. so if you are feeling that then the practice is going on yeah yeah that's right, so okay hot that's all written questions bante yeah that's all the written question so if you have any uh, verbal question we can answer or else we can wind up the session okay then we'll wind up the session and we'll have the dhamma sermon at 4 pm